we're like feeling around the couch and the floor and the table trying to find the phone together and I just looked at him and I was like, this is our first blind moment together. <laughs> is back there joining for the video i'm sure she won't say the whole time but welcome lavender we're all so happy to have you i am so happy to have all of you here hanging out with me and i am so happy to have squarespace as the sponsor of today's video squarespace is the perfect one-stop shop for building a beautiful online presence all right so a few weeks ago i asked over on my twitter for you guys to send in questions for another good old-fashioned Q&A video and you did not disappoint. Over a hundred of you submitted questions, so thank you so much for being so interested in my life. It's certainly been uninteresting for the last six months in quarantine, so hopefully this video will be interesting. We'll see. I also asked over on my Patreon, my Killer Bee Club, for people to submit questions over there. So I'm gonna be pulling from both Twitter as well as my Patreon. If you wanna join my Patreon Killer Bee Club, we have a lot of fun. We go live every single weekend. There's Discord. There's private merch, merch discounts, lots of fun stuff, early announcements. So yeah, check that out. And without further ado, let's get into the first question. Question number one is actually about my boyfriend, Adrian, not about myself. And that is, has he ever had a guide dog or does he ever want one? He has never had a guide dog. Actually, it was really funny because on our first date, the first day we ever met, obviously Gallup was there and that became an easy talking point right off the bat. And one of the first things we talked about is how he had applied six months prior to get his first guide dog and was denied getting a guide dog. And honestly, it's for the best because he told me what school he applied to. And I'm not gonna say it out loud, but in my opinion, it's one of, if not the worst guide dog school. Like I just haven't been impressed with any of the dogs I've seen from the school. So I was like, it's for the best that they, they denied you. We'll find a better one in the future. So my guide dog is definitely something he would consider. Although now we're kind of like, mm because if he got a guide dog, guide dogs are always trained to walk on the left. And so we both always have our left hands occupied, which means we couldn't hold hands when we walk. And of course, being young and in love, we enjoy being able to hold hands when we walk places. And also I feel like we'd always have to walk like in a line <laughs> because to be four wide on a sidewalk, like dog, human, dog, human would be really wide. And even like when we think about the struggles of access, which is one of us having a guide dog, getting in an Uber or Lyft or like going into a grocery store two of us having service dogs would just be like obviously it's not impossible i know couples where both partners have a guide dog and it's something we've talked about maybe in the future but right now just doesn't feel like the right time so currently he's not looking at getting a guide dog super soon or anything i think gallop like sharing himself around yeah gallop feels like he has double the purpose now and lavender hopes so too she does her best Next question, what did my parents think about me getting a guide dog at 13? They were super, super supportive. They were really excited. We actually got a family pet dog when I was eight years old named Rory. And the reason my parents got that dog is because I was afraid of dogs and they wanted me to get comfortable around a dog so that one day I would have the opportunity to get a guide dog should I want one. So they were very supportive of it and it definitely made them feel more confident and secure that I was gonna be safe and I could be more independent out and about in the world. What was the first blind girl moment that your boyfriend saw and how did he react? This is a good one. So it's funny because I wouldn't say I like had a blind girl moment in front of him before we had a blind couple moment together. So it was our second date and we were at his apartment and we were sitting on the couch in the living room and I went to go grab my phone to like check what time it was or something and I couldn't find my phone. So then the two of us, being super blind, we're like feeling around the couch and the floor and the table trying to find the phone together. And I just looked at him and I was like, this is our first blind moment together. <laughs> so that was our first blind moment. And it was just, it was just like cute and funny because we were just in it together. It wasn't like me being blind and him helping me. It was just like us being blind together and figuring it out together. How did I gain the confidence to speak to hundreds of people? I assume this means as a public speaker, like live on stages. It's so funny because as a public speaker, I always hear people say like, oh my God, I'd rather die than speak in public. Public speaking is my biggest fear. But for me, I kind of had a head start because I've been public speaking since I was five years old. So it's like, I didn't develop the fear because I never learned it was something to be afraid of. And I think fear is in some ways a learned behavior. Like a lot of the current fears that I have in life were learned behaviors. 
I have a really bad medical phobia. I have that medical phobia due to like a childhood of, you know, going to hospitals and having painful tests and being poked and prodded by doctors and stuff like that. So that was like a learned fear. Whereas with public speaking, I, I never learned to fear it. So that's one way in which I just kind of had a head start in life for that. But I think also it's just kind of who I would be. Like I grew up dreaming of being an actress and working in Hollywood. And so from the time I stepped on a stage for the first time and, and spoke in public, I begged my parents to put me in acting classes and I did 10 years of stage performance and improv. Really a large focus of my, of my acting classes was on improv. And that's the biggest thing that I would suggest to people who have a fear of public speaking. If you want to become more confident, take improv classes because improv really teaches you that there's like no isn't an option. Like there, you can't fail. You just have to keep on going, push through no matter what. So when you're really skilled at improvisation, you know that you can get on stage and completely forget your script, go off topic, something can go wrong with the mic or the lighting or whatever it is, and you're gonna be fine and you can push through because you can rely on your improv skills. So that is my biggest suggestion. The other thing I will say is to be honest, like the larger the audience, the easier it is. And I think any professional speaker or person who speaks in public a lot would tell you that. When I speak to a crowd of 20,000, it's a heck of a lot easier than when I speak to a crowd of 20 because when you're speaking to an audience of 20, you're just like really hoping one person will laugh at your joke. But when there's 20,000 people, like chances are at least 500 will laugh at your joke. Or when you're speaking to 20, you're really bringing them the energy. You're giving them all of your energy. Whereas when there's 20,000 people, there's so much energy for you to soak up from the audience. So that definitely makes it easier as well. So if you're scared to speak in front of 200 people for the first time, honestly, it's probably easier than speaking in like doing a high school like assignment and presenting to your class of 30. This person was wondering if my guide dog Gallup ever guides my boyfriend because he's also blind. So like if I don't need Gallup, could Adrian like take Gallup to the grocery store and be guided by him? And no, that is definitely a big no-no. You cannot let another person use your guide dog. There's moments like at the dog park that is attached to our apartment building. I've like had Gallup, like Adrian hold the harness and like take five steps with him. But no, you, you wouldn't let your guide dog like fully guide another person it gets between the bond that you and the guide dog have it confuses the dog as to what his job is and who's he who he's supposed to help yeah so no definitely guide dogs like it's a rule that guide dog schools tell you you're not allowed to let somebody else guide your dog or your dog guide somebody else especially because my dog is trained to guide me my dog hasn't been trained to guide another person. And so my dog's used to guiding me and guiding another person is a totally different experience and vibe. And so he, it might be dangerous. And Adrian isn't trained to work with Gallup. So he might not know what to do and it might be dangerous. So for all of those reasons, definitely not. He'll take him for walks off harness though. What was Gallup's reaction when he met my boyfriend for the first time? Honestly, my mom can attest to the fact that Gallup yeah. has always loved men in their 20s and 30s, hasn't he? Always just obsessed like my brother my best friend brayden any guy he meets that's in his 20s and 30s is like this is the one mom this is the one i love this guy i love this guy he's so funny i love him and i think he just gets so sick of being with like my mom and i all the time that he loves that male energy so he loves adrian so much all the time during the day when adrian's sitting at his desk working in the office i'll like go to find Gallup, and Gallup is sleeping at his feet under the desk Aww. like yeah they're really he Gallup is not a liquor he doesn't give kisses he'll all the time like we'll be snuggling in bed and Gallup will be in between the two of us and he'll start licking Adrian and I'm like <laughs> that doesn't happen I know I'm like excuse me hello that's shocking I know Oh, Molly. Looks like I'm chopped liver. Actually, if I was chopped liver, he probably would look. <laughs> what was it like knowing that you were gonna go blind at such a young age? So this is a tough one. My, my family was transparent with me from a very young age. So I grew up knowing that I had a rare disease that affected my vision, that I couldn't see the way everybody else could see, that I was going to continue to lose my vision, that one day I would be blind. I knew all of these things. I learned how to say retinitis pigmentosa when I was like five or six years old. So I grew up very aware, mainly because- Was it a little piggy? Was it a little pig? 
The black and white. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. In Canada, there was this company called Telus that would sell these little black and white pig stuffed animals to fundraise for research for Red Nose Pigmentosa. Yeah, I remember those. They That's were very so cute. cute. Yeah, they called them Pigmentosa. Yeah. Yeah. So the cute. Pigmentosas. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember learning to to pronounce it at my friend's house and and just laughing like Pigman, Pigman. And so I remember that very vividly. And really, my parents told me because I asked, you know. I was a little kid, but I knew things were different. I knew that I was going to a very special hospital and the other kids in my class weren't going. I knew that I had a special teacher that the other students didn't have. I understood those things. I knew that I was different. And so I asked, like, why am I different? And they told me. And I'm glad they did, but there's no way to truly emotionally prepare. Like, yes, I went to therapy for a bit as a kid prior to my vision loss, but none of that, like, prepped me for going blind. And I know this sounds morbid, but the only way I can really think to compare it is the fact that like, we ultimately know that more likely than not, our parents will die before us. But knowing that they'll die before us doesn't help us grieve quicker, right? Like we're not prepping emotionally for them to pass. We're not like, thinking about it, overcoming it, working through those feelings. No, you have no idea how you're gonna cope, deal, how you're gonna feel until the passing has occurred. And that, then you start the grieving process. And so that was what it was like for me. It's like, I knew that this was gonna happen, but knowing didn't mean I could emotionally prep or understand it even. So then when I did go blind, that's when it hit me and I had to mourn and grieve and overcome and find this new identity and, and move forward with my life. And that's when I really understood the impact that being blind would have. What's my favorite type of dessert? I am definitely a chocolate girl. I don't like chewy candies. I don't like gummy candies, sucky candies. I'm not a candy sweet sweet person. If I was to have like a sweet like that, it would be something sour like Sour Keys or Sour Patch Kids or Sour Gummy Worms. But as like a real dessert, my absolute favorites are like a chocolate lava cake with fresh homemade whipped cream, Whoa. right? So like a, a ch one of those chocolate cakes and then you, you cut into it and the, the milky chocolate on oh, the inside like I want to go out right now and get one mm. So good. And then I love chocolate milkshakes are definitely my guilty pleasure food. I love a chocolate milkshake. Just like a good old cheap fast food chocolate milkshake. Like I don't like to get fancy with it, okay? It's like give me a McDonald's chocolate milkshake. That's what I want. So yeah, I'm a big chocolate girl for sure. Yeah, I'd say that's my fave. What is my Starbucks order? God, oh, I have so many. Lately I've been just going with the simple tall, extra hot soy, no foam latte. I, not a huge pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> fan i will admit i don't really like the pumpkin spice thing at least from starbucks it tastes too like synthetic to me i don't know maybe i'll give it a go this year give it a try again over on my instagram i'll do like a story or something giving it a try see how i feel about it if things have changed i also love a green tea latte soy extra hot no foam always but i prefer them in canada they're not as sweet i love a soy london fog if i don't want caffeine and i need like something comforting i get steamed soy milk with a shot of hazelnut and that is super delicious. Did I ever move back to Toronto? I love Toronto. It will always be my home. I think it's like best food in the world. I think it's a really cool city and I like visiting. I don't think I would ever move back there full time. The weather is like, it really affects me. So the weather is like a big reason. And also for me, to be honest, like I just have a lot of trauma built into that place for me. Like there are certain areas that just like bring up really negative flashbacks for me and I think for my mental health it's not a good place between like the way the weather affects my mental health and just a lot of the trauma that I experienced in that city I think it would be hard for me to live there full time again but I do love visiting if I moved back to Canada I think I've always maintained the place I would go in Canada would be Vancouver because it's still really close to Los Angeles so I could get back here for work really easily it's still the west coast chill out vibes and it is like yeah, it's rainy a lot, but it's not snowy. So I'd probably take rain over snow, to be honest. So yeah, probably Vancouver would be the part of Canada I would move to. Great sushi too. This is the question I get asked so much. Where did I get the fluffy purple blanket and fluffy purple pillow that are behind me in every video? I got them at Pottery Barn Teen. PBTeen.com. Hashtag not sponsored. Holly from my Patreon asked how am I dealing with everything going on in the world right now? COVID, LA fires, all of these things. And honestly, it's been a struggle. I'm like, I'm gonna be fully real. It's 
more we've been more than six months in quarantine now la is is a true hot spot for the virus spreading and it's scary i'm very lucky to have my mom lavender gallup my boyfriend i'm certainly very fortunate that i can keep working making content for you guys even if i'm not able to do the full scale of what I used to do for work, like traveling, doing meet and greets, doing speeches at events, that kind of thing. I'm still able to do this and I'm very grateful for that. But all in all, like it's hard, right? We're all adjusting to a new reality. And I think at first it was almost novel. It was like, oh wow, I haven't gotten to take like a break and some time off in a really long time. Like I've been traveling full time for eight years. It's kind of like a much needed break for me. But now I'm like, okay, I'm ready to like get back to real life and not be like scared to, to go outside, especially with poor air quality here. There was like over a week where the sky was just pure gray smoke. It smelled smoky out and the weather was calling for like pure sun, blue skies. So it was scary and- And then there was the earthquake. And then we had a really bad earthquake. There was six gunshots fired at the building next door to me. Honestly, like a lot of Domestic stuff- violence. Yeah, there's been some domestic violence that I'm trying to figure out how to cope with with a neighbor that I very sadly, my boyfriend and I have to overhear and it's heartbreaking and we've called the police and we've spoken to the building and we're doing what we can, but like that's very disturbing to listen to a fellow woman have to face that. It's really painful. So to be honest, all of these things are kind of like when it was just COVID, it was one thing, but now it's like the LA fires, COVID, the gunshots next door, domestic violence, overhearing that, the er really bad earthquake. Like it, it just like all happened in one week and it's like, feels like a lot to be honest. And it all coincided with me PMSing as well. And I lost three major work opportunities that I was working towards that I was really excited about all in one day. And like I said, I'm grateful to still be working, but like my work has slowed down and my income is drastically going down as well, which is why I am so grateful to have sponsors like Squarespace, truly, because it is tough times. And I'm, again, so fortunate that I'm doing better than many. And I recognize that, but it is still scary times and it is still a new reality that I have to adjust to. That's very different than my old reality. So I'm, I'm coping, but there's ups and downs, right? And, and that's life. And I think sometimes, to be honest, I posted about this on my Instagram a while back, but like sometimes I feel scared to be honest when I'm struggling with an insecurity or I'm feeling a little bit negative or I have self-doubt because a lot of you look to me for motivation or inspiration of overcoming mental illness, learning self-love and all of these things. And yes, those are those are such important parts of my journey, which is why I feel so passionate about sharing them with all of you to help hopefully empower you to feel those things as well. But that that doesn't mean like that I don't still slip, right? A journey means there's ups and downs and I have downs too and that's real and that's human and that's life. And I wanna be able to share those with you to show you that you can go down and you can come back up again time and time again and it's okay to fall but you just have to keep getting back up and that's what I'm doing right now I've fallen a little bit and I'm working towards getting back up and that's okay I forgive myself I forgive myself for feeling insecure sometimes I forgive myself for the self-doubts that I have sometimes or the negative thoughts and you should too because we're in an unprecedented time you know this is not normal and it's okay for all of us to struggle even if we recognize the ways in which we are privileged. Even if we still have gratitude, it's okay to also slip and, and feel sad or to cry or to question things or to feel angry. It's okay. It's a journey. Life is a journey. And so I hope you can recognize that when I do share those insecurities or doubts with you, it's because I'm human and I want to show you that it's okay to, to feel those things. All emotions are valid. Carrie from my Patreon asked, what is the first thing I want to do when the world, quote, goes back to normal? I don't think we'll ever go back to what it used to be. I think it's going to be a new normal and that's okay, right? Maybe the world needed a kick in the butt to move to the next phase of life. So once things do get a little safer, maybe once we have a vaccine in place and the world opens up, borders open up, I would like to see my family. I miss my dad. I miss my brother. So that would be the first thing for sure is to travel to see my family. It's very hard. We haven't seen my dad in seven months and we haven't seen my brother in even longer. And it's hard because we used to see my dad every six weeks for 10 days at a time. We used to see my brother every couple months. So it's been really tough. My brother lives in London, England. My dad lives in Toronto, Canada. My mom and I live here in Los Angeles. So that's been definitely weighing on me emotionally as well, for sure. So that would be what I would like to do. Comment below and let me know what you would like to do. What is number one on your list? The thing that you miss doing in like real life.
Like I said, during these challenging times, I am very grateful to still be able to work with amazing sponsors like Squarespace. From online websites and stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace has got you covered. Squarespace is where I've been hosting my website, mollyburkofficial.com, for a number of years now. Even my boyfriend who studied computer science and builds websites and apps from scratch looked at my website and he was like, you honestly have a really good website. I was like, yes. Yeah, thank you to Squarespace. So if you want to build your own website, build a beautiful online presence, definitely check it out. What I do love is that they make it easy to build a website that's accessible to all those who use it, including people like myself or screen reader users. That was very important to me when building a website, which is why I sought out Squarespace to build mine on. So thank you to Squarespace. You can go to squarespace.com right now for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash Molly Burke to get 10% off your purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you so much for sticking with me for another video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. If you want more Molly until then, you can click up here for this video or over here for this one. Love you.